Hello and welcome to Business Unmuted, a business discussion broadcast live on LinkedIn from Recognition PR's studio and later shared on platforms including YouTube, Spotify and Apple Podcasts. As ever, we're kindly sponsored by Virtue BMW, which is part of Gateshead-based Virtue Motors PLC. If you're in the market for a new used or fleet vehicle, stop by one of the dealerships in Stockton, Durham, Sunderland, Malton or York. Today we're joined in the studio by Nikki Jolly, owner and managing director of human resources consultancy HR Today. Also with her on the sofa is Samuel Harrison, managing director of An Immersion, which produces digital visualisation tools. And thanks to both of you for coming in. Now, yesterday, the Prime Minister announced plans for a 12 billion a year package to fund the NHS and reform social care. Most working Britons will pay 1.25% more on both national insurance contributions and dividends. And for the first time, more than 1.25 million working pensioners will also pay the new levy. The Halifax has also released its monthly property index, which shows UK house prices have reached yet another high. In August this year, the average cost of a property increased by 0.7%, making the average property worth £262,954, topping the previous peak set in May. Now, I imagine most people in business will have noticed a feeling of things getting back to normal this September. Roads are busier, certainly more clients seem to be back in offices, and I attended one of my first real-life events since the recent lockdown uh, by going to the Tees Tech Awards Celebration Lunch in Teesside this week. Now, both of you, are you finding things are getting back to normal? Nikki first. Yes, well, the traffic's busier, isn't it, yes. <laughs> to start with? But yes, every, there's a buzz, there's a feeling. Yes. It's just everybody's started to become back and normal. Sam what about Definitely. you yeah um, there's been uh, the, um, I suppose events are coming back a little bit so it's been great to get out and start to meet people face to face again one or two client meetings and we've we've been been bringing some people in to demonstrate some of the new technology as well all while keeping things as safe as we can but mm. but it's really good yeah. well I, I found this a similar and, and business has been very busy this week in fact I've got a zoom throat <laughs> uh, I was my daughter's wedding uh, the weekend and she got married in America mm. which meant I had to attend by zoom and now uh, giving the speech by zoom and I've got a really sore throat and I haven't got shaken off but every time someone has a sore throat or a sniffle these days in the office what's the first thing they say it's not COVID <laughs> and I've done my uh, up the nose test uh, or as my little granddaughter calls it the nosy test yes. uh, I always pass the nosy test but I always did <laughs> <laughs> right so let's let's pick up on some of the issues I just talked about uh, Nikki first of all 1.25% on uh, national insurance contributions and the employer as well extra cost of employing people uh, yeah, people as you know through your own consultancy are asking for more pay they're asking for more flexibility and there are some elements of productivity difficulties in mm -hmm. that um, and it does sometimes feel if you're running a business that everyone else wants to run it for you what was your take on this extra tax um, if I'm honest I feel like we've been punished I think we've survived we've been through a difficult year yes I've had a good year but lots of businesses haven't and I just think the first people that are here are business owners dividends mm and Nash Insurance. So we're growing, so I've now got to take that into account when I'm recruiting. I'm struggling as it is. Mm. We've already done large across the board salary increases um, to retain and attract new talent, and now there's even more. So I just think it's disappointing that we're the first to be hit after everything we've fought through, if I'm honest. And the FSB, uh, they, they are concerned about this as well. They predict that unemployment would rise possibly £50,000 due to the, the tax uh, increases on employers. I'm not sure that we as businesses might overstate it a bit. I, I sort of agree with your general sentiment, Nikki, but at the same time, Boris has hypothecated a tax and that's very rarely happened in taxation mm -hmm. where there's a law that says this has to be spent on that issue. Yes, it is different. And I think he said that it won't, it'll only for a year and mm. then it reverts back. So, you know, let's see what happens with it and if it's actually successful. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Sam, what did you make of it? Um, I think it, I suppose for me, it, it is hitting businesses as well. So uh, I suppose if there were other ways of finding that money, it would be it would be preferable. Um, Perhaps looking at, at something a bit a bit more progressive, you know, at the higher earners perhaps, or, or those that that have that have got pro are, are earning money from other ways. Um, but I, I must admit, I'm not an expert in the detail of tax. So, uh, so yeah. Uh, 
Well, you heard uh, Nikki talking about her own business, how busy it was, and how um, uh, and how even pay uh, was being pushed up and so on. Uh, and uh, she's got a great business, a successful business. Yours is also a successful business. It's making these visualizations, uh, 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 augmented reality, and so on. Um, what what's your state of play as far as finding people and paying people? Uh, well, over the last year, we took on four new people. That was an interesting process in itself, in 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 uh, interviewing and hiring and having new starters entirely remotely. Um, over that same process or, or so time period, we we've, we've hit targets and exceeded them, and and that's led to to uh, wage increases as well. So we've uh, you know all round for us in the digital sector, I think it's been it's been uh, I wouldn't say booming, but but it's been pleasing that we w we were able to sort of weather the storm. And we've been able to share some of that with the team as well. Uh, in recent times, and we're, t we're broadcasting this from Teesside, so we're between Yorkshire and the North East, I suppose. Um, and it's been very interesting uh, that the last few months there's been a lot of in an interest taken on Teesside by the national press, by bigger businesses. And recently I found myself showing a lot of people around the area both as a board member of our development corporation and as a PR person. And you, were, you joined with me when I showed the Sunday Times and I showed Liam Halligan from the Sunday Telegraph around. Uh, do you sense that we are in the national spotlight as far as levelling up is concerned? It does feel like there's a bit more attention on us at the moment. Um, uh, difficult to know fully though, obviously I've not been around the rest of the country so I don't know that, you know, I've, I've not really had a sense of, of what's happening there but uh, but it does feel like there's a little bit more attention and uh, a lot happening around here. There's a, there's a, there's a feeling that things are, get, are starting to move fairly fast. What do you sense in your own sector, in the digital technology sector, I mean you happen to be in this very specialised bit of uh, digital technology but I know that around you in Boho in Middlesbrough there are lots of different digital businesses. What is your sense of its buoyancy and the future and the confidence of people in terms of making investments? Um, I think it's it's really growing. I mean, in the immersive area, uh, businesses are now starting to recognise there are some real re there's some real value add around virtual reality and training, for example. And if you look in the entertainment sector, the gaming sector is absolutely booming. Um, so, I mean, I think that's probably the bigger driver in, in Teesside at the moment in terms of new jobs. Though, I mean, we've, we've grown 20% and I would expect us to grow another 20 to 50% over the next year as well. I was talking to a, an entrepreneur today uh, who has um, uh, an EIS fund that funds uh, startup um, uh, tech businesses around the Oxford ecosystem. And he was having no difficulty finding money to have invested in different tech uh, companies there. Is there a Teesside ecosystem and is there an appetite to invest in it? And in Oxford, it was centred around the university. Is there an ecosystem centred around Teesside University? Um, well, I would say perhaps not quite as evolved as, the, as there is around Oxford. Um, but um, uh, I mean, there is there is a network. Um, I would I would probably say it was more across the northeast than perhaps right. localised around Teesside in any specific way. Although you were a university spin out of sorts, weren't you? Uh, of sorts, yeah. I, I worked at the university and then set up a company within the university. Yeah. Okay, Nikki, let's let's turn to you. Uh, we talked about the national insurance uh, 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 increases, and we also talked about wage pressures. Um, now, wage pressures also can be fed back through to our house prices. I just mm. read through uh, the data from the Halifax about house prices. Uh, when it comes to your staff and their appetite to buy their first house and they're pricing it all up, their salary really counts, doesn't it? It's it the does. one of the first times a young member of staff works out what their salary can buy. Yes, yeah, so when we, we sort of develop a lot of people throughout our business because we're quite specialised and unique in what we do we do tend to bring in younger people and develop them through and to them what they're looking for when they get to that point in their life when they're looking for houses is how much can I buy how much can I borrow I'm lucky to have a husband that does financial services so he can help them work all that out yeah. as well um, but properties in the area have just absolutely rocketed and then just not sitting on the shelf properties are selling before they even hit the internet Absolutely. So we've looked at properties and they've gone before they're getting there. So it's not just the financials, it's just the market at the moment is just crazy. And the younger generation are the ones that are suffering at the moment. I mean, I have a member of staff who has been uh, involved in trying to buy a house in Redcar 
and there's uh, there's gazumping going on in oh, Redcar. Right, yeah. Now, you know, <laughs> if I had said that to you on these sofas just 18 months ago, you'd say, come on, Graham, get real. <laughs> uh, but gazumping in Redcar. But the gazumping also feeds through to his salary expectations, you know, because he, and it's fair enough, you know, people work for you and they have a purpose to work, and their purpose is goals. to have a stable home. Yeah. Um, do you find that this is the case with you? You have a lot of young staff too. We do, yes. Um, and uh, I mean, I know a few, a few are moving house at the moment, going up, a, up a step on the ladder. Um, I think the majority of them rent actually uh, in and around Middlesbrough um, uh, and through the Thirteen Group, etc. And the Thirteen Group uh, is one classic example of a good housing association that's getting these houses to rent out there. And if you're in your twenties, perhaps. The, you don't have much of an option but to rent, um, yeah, and, and you know you, you, I don't know whether whether you rent or, or you own a house, but it seems to be you're older by the time you're a first time buyer now. Mm. And is that your experience with your workforce? Yes, I would say that's definitely they do rent or they stay at home a lot longer. Mm. You know, kids staying at home till they're thirty odd, and then when they move out, they're either getting married or they're with partners or whatever. So there's a joint income that enables them to actually start to buy their first home. Okay, let's talk about each of your disciplines. Let's talk about, uh, Sam, where you are and the kind of products that you're now developing and the kind of clients that you're now seeing. The business has moved on a great deal uh, over the last two years and I know that during the pandemic you even took staff on, so it's mm -hmm. it's not a regressive business at all. Tell us what, what's happening at Animersion. Okay, well, there's a few interesting areas. We're doing a lot of work at the moment with um, uh, uh, skills Development Scotland, up in Scotland, uh, and uh, um, Anglo-American looking at computer games that can be used to educate uh, school kids around or inspire them as to other career opportunities. So there's lots of skills gaps in the economy um, and, uh, and often those won't even be noticed by, by the kids. They have no idea that there's opportunities in those spaces. So we've been developing uh, educational games, things that will entertain but also open up their eyes to, to interesting <coughs> career opportunities that actually help, I suppose, the nation fill those gaps in the future. And what platform, well, excuse me, my, my Zoom throat kicking <laughs> in there, uh, what platform will the uh, youngsters tend to use now? Because uh, is the virtual reality headset, is that the chosen platform for these games? or? Um, at the moment, I would argue in, in a school context, probably not the wisest thing to be sharing headsets, yeah, um, yeah. though there is technology out there for sterilising them very quickly. Um, uh, augmented reality is fantastic and that's really coming of age at the moment so you can you can have augmented reality experiences through a website now you don't need to deliver um, you don't need to provide an app so we can have uh, interesting content that you can you can browse to on your on your phone on a website and that can that can put products into the room or put uh, gaming experiences in really interesting ways so that's really one to watch I think in the in the marketing and I suppose engagement space um, virtual reality, I think, is maturing a great deal in, in, the, in the training space, and I think outside of entertainment, that's, that's undoubtedly its, its strongest area. Uh, but, yeah. People don't tend to like to read books anymore, do they? <laughs> Manuals and ring binders full of training facilities. Uh, it's not the done thing. No, I think, I think certainly in training, um, uh, the potential of virtual reality to fully immerse you in, an, in, 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 a, in a situation, give you the opportunity for muscle memory, for example. You'll never get muscle memory from a book. Um, there's a lot of, there's, a, there's, there's phenomenal potential in that space. Um, and and yeah, I, I, I think there will always be a space for, for, for book learning and for, for, for those sorts of things and certainly for, for, uh, uh, for real hands-on training. Um, but the potential with some of these technologies to optimise those experiences, and uh, it's really around what's the, what's going to give you the best the, the best uh, payback in, in in different scenarios. And a project now, what what is a sort of project lead time in your business? If you if you were if someone's watching this and they have a business and they wish to provide some training material in a new fangled way, very innovative, very attractive, how long will it take to spec it and deliver it? We can get through the, I suppose, we go through a discovery process where we'll deep dive with customers and understand what the challenges are, what their aspirations are, um, and we can specify a solution, uh, a, a, generally a proof of concept initially to test it within weeks. Um, our current lead time on, on development is, is six to eight weeks before we can start developing in anger, and then um, usually within, within a couple of months you'll be able to get a turnaround on that first module of training. Um, really, if you're looking at very broad um, subjects, uh, you can you can deliver a lot by sort of multiplexing it. So it's not necessarily the case that it will then take you two months for every single module. We can then deliver a lot fairly quickly. Now, 
uh, Nikki, you are going to be doing some research on the workplace as yes. part of a strategy for September. Tell us the kind of thing you're going to go out and try and find from maybe people watching this programme. So what we're trying to establish is obviously furlough is coming to an end. I think people were hanging on that it may get extended, but I genuinely don't think it is. And anyone thinking that need to take action. The sooner it ends, the better from exactly. my point of view. I... But on the 1st of October, if they don't do something, people are going to turn up to work and go, I'm here. So I think what we're trying to do is establish where people are. Do people still have people on furlough, flexi furlough? Are they planning redundancies? Um, how do they intend to get people back to work? Are they set up? Are they ready? Are they doing all the health and safety aspects? Are they planned to do return to work for these people? This isn't something that just overnight is gonna happen. Mm. So what we're trying to establish is what state people are in, how they've found the process, and what's gonna be their big issues so that we can start addressing them for them on our um, online meetings and Q and A's and if they wanna contact us, and we will help them prepare for this to come to an end. And I know that you're going to publish some of this research, send it to our MPs, decision makers, let them see what the state of the employment market is, because quite often they're looking in a rear view mirror with data. Mm, yes. How do people take part in this survey and what kind of people do you want to take part? Well, it's business owners that you know have been through the pandemic, they've survived, obviously, mm. there's no point people at the moment who haven't got through. So it's active people that are still relying on support, guidance, and what they're doing with their employees. So Northeast businesses, where are you now? It's a snapshot. So it's a simple survey to do. It's not going to take six hours. Questions. Isn't it? Six questions. Uh, the website is tiny.one forward slash HR today. Um, and do take the survey. I'll take the survey Fantastic. afterwards. It'll Please. be very good. Sam, you're going to Please. take the survey, aren't you? Of course. Uh, and would you come back and tell us what the results are? I absolutely will. I'll be delighted to tell you the results. Well, Sam, Nikki, it was great to talk to you on this week's Business Unmuted. Join us again next week for more discussions on some of the con contemporary issues affecting businesses in the north of England.